What's going on, Broncos country? Welcome into another edition of the Denver Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here with five former Broncos players that Denver could re-sign before training camp or even going into the season. We'll go through all five of these players, and I'll tell you whether or not they would be a good fit for the 2023 Denver Broncos. And let's get started with a very recent player on this team, and that would be defensive lineman Shelby Harris. So, Harris, who was, of course, a part of the Russell Wilson trade. If he were to be re-signed, could Denver say they won the trade? You got Russell Wilson, and you got Shelby Harris back. Now, Harris was released by the Seahawks this offseason after just one year in Seattle. It was not because he was bad. It's because they are starting to build a very young defense, and they wanted his snaps to go to someone who could be on this team for the next five to six seasons or something like that. And Harris, in his upper 30s now, or mid-30s, is not going to be that guy. Of course, he played with Denver from 2017 to 2020. 21. And last year, like I said, he was pretty darn good. PFF ranked him as the 17th best defensive end out of 127 qualifying players. When you look at his stats last year up in the Pacific Northwest, 44 tackles, 5 tackles for loss, 2 sacks, and 6 QB hits. He's always been a very good pass rusher as well as a run stopper. Depending on what kind of system he's in, in a 3-4 front, he's a defensive end. In a 4-3 front, he probably gets kicked, uh, kicked inside a little bit. But Harris was darn good when he was with the Denver Broncos. You look at his stats while he was at the Mile High City. 117 tackles, 34 tackles for loss, 21 and a half sacks. He led this team in sacks one season not too long ago, and 44 QB hits. So when we look at the Broncos defensive line depth chart, it's up for grabs in my opinion, right? You have Zach Allen, DJ Jones, Jonathan Harris, who is penciled in, although I think maybe Tyler, Line, Tyler Lancaster might have a good shot at starting. The point is, is that there is room to be had and snaps to be shared when it comes to the defensive line position opposite of Zach Allen at that other five-technique defensive end spot. And Shelby Harris could be a good fit in that spot, right? The Denver Broncos defensive line missed Shelby Harris last season. Denver's defensive line last year was a lot of all bark, no bite, it felt like, right? Where it never felt like they were going to take over the game, but they were never going to cost you the game either, right? They were just a little bit below middle of the pack. If I had to rank them out of 32 teams, probably in that 16 to 20 range, and that's fine. Like, defensive lines don't win you a ton of games at this point in terms of run-stopping abilities, but if you can get after the quarterback and if you can squeeze out four to five sacks from Shelby Harris this year on a good year. You add that to the committee pass rush rotation with Randy Gregory coming back from injury and uh, excuse me, Baron Browning coming back from injury and Randy Gregory also coming back from injury. He'd probably be a good addition to this squad. I'm game to add another pass rusher like Shelby Harris, who is familiar with this team and with the system, and he could be a good addition at this point in the offseason. Now, I just want to do a quick Shelby Harris appreciation moment here because with Von Miller and Bradley Chubb, they got all the attention, as deservingly so, too, right? But Shelby Harris was quietly very consistent and very good. And when he was traded to Seattle, outside of Denver, not a whole lot of people knew who Shelby Harris was. And he was arguably the best player that went over to Seattle, right? Between Drew Locke and Noah Fant and Shelby Harris, I'd say Harris is the best football player between the three of them. So for him to come back, I think that'd be a lot of fun. But let's just show the guy some love. If you think Shelby Harris was a little underappreciated while being in Denver, Hit that thumbs up button. The second player that Denver could have a reunion with is running back Philip Lindsay, the former UDFA, the Colorado native, has been in the XFL lately playing for the Seattle Sea Dragons. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the XFL season is like. If, he, if it's still underway, is it over? It's over. Okay, producer just told me it's over. That's how much XFL I watch. So he was with the Colts back in 2022. He kind of went up and down between the active roster and the practice squad. If you remember, he was activated for the Colts-Broncos awful, awful primetime game 
because uh, Jonathan Taylor was injured. Now, the former UDFA and Pro Bowl running back was with the Denver Broncos back in 2018 through 2019, and he had some good runs with Denver as well. You look at his stats while he was in Denver compared to what he has done since then, and there's a big drop-off, right? 2,000 yards with the Broncos over 31 games, averaging nearly 5 yards a pop, 16 touchdowns, but since then... It has not been very glamorous for Philip Lindsay. His average went down almost a yard and a half. Two touchdowns in 28 games, 800 yards. Could not stick in Houston and didn't really catch on in Indianapolis as well. Now, not too long ago, he was asked about coming back to Denver. And here's what he said. I would love to come back to Denver. That would be a great storybook ending to a big-time fairy tale. I would be ecstatic. It would be a dream come true again. I had my greatest years in Denver, and it would be great to be able to get an opportunity to finish off my career there. I wouldn't be there trying to be a starter, a star. I just want to play my role and help win some games and bring something to Denver and that is a perfect quote and exactly what you want to hear if Philip Lindsay is going to have a chance to come back to Denver because he knows this is Javante Williams' team right now as a running back. So if Williams is not close to returning by the time week one rolls around and Denver goes, all right, well, we wanted to wait and see before we signed anyone. We wanted to at least give Williams a chance to play week one. Now that we know we don't have him for the start of the season, why not add a little bit extra love to this running back room with Samaj P. Ryan and whoever else makes this roster, whether it's Tony Jones, Tyler Beatty, Jaleel McCaughlin. How about we give, you know, the former Denver Broncos legend, if you will, Philip Lindsay, another crack at it, at least a tryout or something. So I'm not opposed to having Philip Lindsay come back. I will say, as fun as that will be, I don't think you're recapturing 2018 Philip Lindsay anymore. And, and Philip Lindsay talked about that himself, right? He talked about coming back to be a special teamer and do whatever's asked of him. And if the role, if the call, if the job asked for him to be in a committee backfield, he could be in a good spot right there, right? No one's asking him to have 200 carries in the season anymore. Just help get this team through until Javante Williams returns. So what do you guys think? Should the Broncos sign Philip Lindsay? Y for yes or N for no? Chime in for me down in the comment section. I'll be curious what you guys are saying. Moving on to our third free agent potential reunion. What about Bryce Callahan, right? At one time, a sneaky good free agency acquisition from Chicago. Unfortunately, the former UDFA out of Rice just never stuck in Denver because he was not very available, right? Signed a three-year deal following Vic Fangio and missed his entire first season with the Broncos due to an injury before the regular season. And he only ended up playing two out of those three seasons with the Broncos. And when he did play, he was darn good. But it wasn't very often that he did play. That was sort of the issue, right? The lack of availability. Now, when you look at Bryce Callahan's stats from last season when he was with the L.A. Chargers, another player from the Broncos secondary going to L.A. Uh, or San Diego, whatever, 47 tackles, two tackles for loss, six pass breakups and three interceptions through 15 games. If you just look at those numbers, one would think he's signed somewhere right now, but he's getting up in the age column and teams know that it's not very often or ever you get 17 games, 16 games, a full season out of Bryce Callahan. So there's some hesitancy to sign him. Now, if an injury pops up across any team's cornerback depth chart, I'm sure Callahan will be fielding some calls to see what his um, uh, conditioning level is and whether or not he's in football shape. But when I look at Denver's cornerback room, what do I see here? Pat Sertan going into his third season. Damari Mathis going into his second season. Kwan Williams, a bit of a veteran. Riley Moss, going to be a rookie, right? You've got a lot of young pieces right here. I just don't see this reunion happening. Compared to the previous two we looked at, this one feels like the least likely of that trio thus far. You want to see what you have in Damari Mathis going into year two, right? Who got up to a slow start, but he improved as the season went along. You want to see what you have in Riley Moss. Someone you saw and thought was so valuable, it was worth two third-round picks, right, to trade up and get him and then use a third-round selection on him. I don't know if adding Bryce Callahan, when you already have a slot corner in Kwan Williams, is really a good fit for 2023. 
If an injury pops up, we can reassess. But as of right now, if, if everyone's healthy, I don't see this one happening. Now, what I do see happening is you guys getting into these awesome Broncos t-shirt combos. You get not one shirt, but you get two shirts, and they're on sale. Go to chatsports.com slash Broncos combo. I put that link in the comments and the description. Click on it and get a Broncos t-shirt combo today while supplies last. Our fourth free agent reunion, and we can kind of bundle these next two together, Dalton Reisner and Michael Schofield. So two offensive linemen that are still on the free agent market, and maybe Denver would be looking to add some depth. They're at different points in their career, right? Schofield would be added to be an offensive lineman as a six-man on the interior side, right? First guy off the bench, he's a backup. I still think Dalton Reiser can be a starter in the NFL. And frankly, I'm shocked he's still a free agent. I'm not quite sure why that is. I don't know if it's him waiting for the right opportunity or for some reason the NFL doesn't view him as a starting player anymore and he wants starting money. I'm not quite sure. But here's what I do know, and that is he is a darn good football player. Um, that, well, that was a little harsh. That was a little ex uh, exaggeration. He's a good football player. And I think if you looked at Denver's offensive line, you could do some reshuffling here, right? What if you added Dalton Reisner and you moved him to right guard and then you moved Quinn Miners over to center? Look at the PFF ranks for these guys if they were all in the starting lineup. I get it that Dalton Reisner's four years in Denver was kind of meh, kind of bland, vanilla-esque, and there wasn't a lot of reason to believe he's a long-term piece on the offensive line. But I think we can all agree Dalton Reisner is better than Lloyd Cushenberry. So if you wanted to move Quinn Miners over from guard to center, which he's done before, he's played center in the collegiate ranks, and then you plugged Reisner in at right guard, that's probably your best starting five combination out there. So I also don't see a signing happening here like Bryce Callahan at the moment unless an injury pops up or Lloyd Cushenberry looks dreadful and the other guys look dreadful, like Alex Forsyth or Kyle Fuller, who they signed slash drafted in free agency. Um, I, I think they're probably going to hold out and not add one of those two offensive linemen. Like I said, Reisner is looking for starting money. I thought he would get starting money, but I don't see him coming back to be a backup. Schofield, who started his career in Denver, could come back, but that would be in a backup role. And honestly, when you look at Denver's depth chart, it didn't have a lot of recognizable names beyond the starting five. Cam Fleming is a good swing tackle. I like that addition as a backup. But outside of that, there's not a whole lot of guards and centers that I feel comfortable with filling in for a pinch. So Schofield could be a good addition in that role. Now, before we get on out of here, I want everyone watching to have a wonderful 4th of July. And let me know what your favorite part about 4th of July is. Is it the hot dogs, the hamburgers, the fireworks, the parades? Let me know what your favorite part of 4th of July is. If you were starting a 4th of July draft, what would be your 1-1 one, one pick? Sound off in the comment section. As always, our summer hot takes to wrap up the show it's a hot day in Denver today. 91 degrees is the high. So we're getting first take screaming A, skipping Shannon caliber of a hot take. And here it is. Maybe my best one of all. Corn dogs, I mean this, are criminally underappreciated and underrepresented across the country. Why are corn dogs only available like turkeys on Thanksgiving, special occasions? Corn dogs need to have a much bigger role in the American food pyramid. They should not be reserved for food trucks in the 4th of July in one-off stands you find them. No, get me corn dogs on menus across the country. That is my first take hot take for this uh, episode because I need more corn, corn dogs. Corn dogs, Jackie. Corn dogs for all these people.